Hi, I'm Stephanie with Stephanie Susie Photography. Hi, I'm Sean David with Sean David Video. And we're just here talking today. <laughs> chatting. We're chatting about working together as wedding photographer and wedding videographer. So we're just talking about um, working together as like how on over the course of a wedding day, being respectful of each other and valuing each other's opinions and time and making a wedding day go smoothly. Yeah, and working with the bride <coughs> as well, because mm -hmm. we're two, mm -hmm. we have two separate missions, obviously, mm -hmm. if you're watching this, mm -hmm. you probably understand that. Yes. So what are some <coughs> things that we can kind of talk about and offer up as advice. Yeah, um, to working with each other. Yeah, working copacetic. Yeah, yeah, so I think what we've decided is that the, the, the big element of a wedding videographer, photographer relationship is just having respect for the other person and their shot and what they want to get. So I know as a photographer, when I roll in, I mean, my, a photographer's schedule tends to be the priority for the day, yeah. but that doesn't mean that the videographer is not important. So I feel like um, as a photographer, you have a responsibility to come in and make room for the videographer. Like we, we have a response because obviously the bride and the groom have, they value the videography because they've paid for you to be there. <laughs> but um, so you have to value at least that, um, the bride and the groom wanting wanting this video. So you have to make room for them to get their shot in throughout the day. Um, well, and even prior to the day mm -hmm. of the wedding, mm -hmm. it's good for the videographer <clears throat> to already be talking with obviously the bride and the groom and if there's an event planner, but more specifically the photographer mm -hmm. to see their timeline because you kind of have to work around their, their main goal because that's like the golden Mm -hmm. thing you yep. know which is fine but you need to understand that so that you're not showing up trying to be alpha and yeah running the show and then the photographer is like no I, what are you talking about no. yeah <laughs> yeah yeah so it's it's about respecting each other and respecting each other's time and talent and shot and and all of that so i think it's important to as an example the way sean and i work together is i may have the bride out in a situation in a pose in the perfect light in a, in a scene and i'm working with her for a little while but as soon as i feel like i've gotten my shot sean can pipe in and say hey can i have her for a minute and that's when i'll step away and take just a, a minute or two break while he has control of the scene and can tell the bride what she what he wants her to do. And, and that's hap that happens a lot. Yeah, it does. It happens and a lot. It also happens the reverse way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like let's say Stephanie's getting a shot and I'm just like, oh my God, mind blown. I wanted to get this. Mm -hmm. I go get that and whatever. But there's been plenty of times where mm -hmm. it's like, hey, I have an idea. Do we have time? Mm -hmm. And then she's like, oh, I want this too, you know? <laughs> yeah, because so. he, he has a good eye too. He has he has the talent oh, yeah. and we all see things differently. And so some of the things that he sees, I'll look at it and I'll be like, man, I need to get in there. I need to get that shot. So when we work well together, I can say, dude, I, I, want, it. I want to get that too. So when you're done with her, I want her back. And it works, it works, but it's, it's, it's all about being respectful of each other and what, what we, we each want from a wedding day. Yeah. So that, and I would say communication. Communication. Yeah. So like, I mean, it's key. Yes, it is. It is. It's big time because I, as the photographer, I usually, the way that I work with weddings is I'm, I'm creating the time help. I'm working with the bride and the groom to create, or I'm gonna say, I work with the couple on the wedding day to create their timeline. And so I'm in it. I'm in the, the process of the creation of the timeline, but I want the videographer to know that. So I wanna make sure that I have access to the videographer. And so I can send them my version of the timeline so we can all be on the same page, which is why I like to, I like to send the, the timeline to the bride 
but I need all of her people to also know what we're looking at. Yeah. And so that if things need to change, we can all be on the same page of when things need to change. And so because it's important. They do. They, do. they More change. More than you would probably think. Yes. No, there is no <laughs> wedding that has ever gone according to plan. There's just no, they've never, some run ahead of schedule and some run way Which behind. is okay. Yeah, it just is what you it know. is. It's the nature of the beast. Um, so yeah, so communication, respect, um, get out of the way. <laughs> yeah. Move. Okay. Move. I'm trying to do my thing. <laughs> I, uh, I attended a workshop and I'm talking, this was a long time ago. It was like 2012 hashtag Bobby Sheridan. But, um, she had a videographer, videographer come into our workshop and it was valuable because one of the main things that I took away from him in that workshop was that he was like, it's okay for you to walk in front of our camera, just get in and get out, get what you got and get get out of there so that you're not just hovering in front of our camera. So I think you need to elaborate on that because that's your expertise. Yeah, I mean, it's, um, I mean, if you're already working with the photographer and whatever creatives are doing the event, in this case, the wedding, mm -hmm. you've kind of already probably, well, hopefully you should, at least I should say, you should communicate like, hey, all right, so we're going into the ceremony. Here's where I'm gonna be. I'm gonna try and shadow you and stay out of your shots. But, you know, communicating like, I'm not gonna use every single clip of every second from every single angle. So like you can be wherever you need to be and don't worry about it, I'll edit it later. Mm -hmm. um, and just communicating that because you don't want the photographer to miss a shot, especially when like, you know, the ideal, mm -hmm. the prayers and everyone's rushing up to get the close up shots and mm -hmm. stuff and mm -hmm. just being able to work well with whoever you're working with mm -hmm. as a photographer. Mm -hmm. um, it just makes things go smoother. And something I always like to say, even to the bride and the groom when I'm shooting, like, hey, I'm not here. Mm -hmm. I wanna get the raw emotion. Mm -hmm. I might give you some direction, cause I mean, let's face it, they're not actors and actresses mm -hmm. and that's fine. But you know, you kind of fluff a little moment. Yep. But typically I'm just, I'm responding to the moments that are happening. Mm -hmm. So there'll be times where I'm behind you mm -hmm. and I maybe have a hand so you, you know, you can kind of mm -hmm. guide me or whatever, yep. but um, I completely forgot what I was talking about. <laughs> Staying out of the way. Staying out of the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Getting back into that one. Yeah. Um, if I'm out working with a bride and I've got her in some light that is just money, and Sean sees it too, then he can come, when, I, when I'm done and I feel like I've gotten what I need, then Sean politely comes up and says, hey, can I steal her for a minute so I can get my shot? And I'm like, absolutely, because this is both, the bride is valuing both of us. So yeah. this is as much his shot as it is mine. And I think we've mentioned this before, but like there are times when Sean has set up a, a, a shot and I've been like, holy crap, I have to get that. I want to get that too. And then I'll say, hey, I would like to have her when you're when you're done with her. So it's 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 all about respect and communication and just just allowing the other person's space to do their job and just getting along with everybody, you know? Well, and, and I think too, staying out of the way with yeah. the topic we're talking about for the videographer mm -hmm. and the team or whoever, however many people you're rolling with, um, let's say for the ceremony, you don't want to just slap a tripod smack dab in the middle of, you know, mm -hmm. the lane and, and leave it there. There you go. Yeah. Don't... And then get a little pissy when someone gets in front of it. You yeah. Know? You can't do that. So you, you kind of need to find, you know, like typically what I do is I, I put a tripod basically, you know, front and center of everything that's going on, but kind of out of the way, like I'm in the crowd that way. If someone's sitting here and there's a tripod there, they're not gonna interact with it. They're not even gonna care. People can go wherever they want. Mm -hmm. And that that even to me is just getting out of the way. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Getting out of the way. That's a good Because my good whole point. my whole aim is to be a ninja. Mm -hmm. A fat ninja. <laughs> <laughs> like I don't wanna be seen. I don't wanna take away from what's going on. Yeah. You know. So not even just with with working with your photographer getting out of the way, but uh... Well, I mean, that's as a photographer, I, I intentionally try, there's certain places during a ceremony that I try not to be 
purely because it's obtrusive. Yeah. I'm just I'm just being I'm I'm being distractive to the people who this is their wedding ceremony, like the moms and the dads that are sitting on the front row. If my big old booty is walking in front of them, I may be getting the shot, but what am I taking away? from the family and their experience of the wedding day. So like Sean was saying about trying to be invisible, I mean, I can't be invisible. I just am who I am. Stephanie? But I try to stay as out of the way as possible. So I think that goes back into the, don't just set up a tripod in the middle of the aisle and just leave it there throughout the entire ceremony. If you've got to set a tripod there for a few minutes during the ceremony, then do your thing. But if you don't have to, then don't do it. Especially don't set up a tripod in a beautiful pergola or altar or whatever it is, don't go back and set up your tripod in the back where it's very obvious what that is because it's gonna be in every one of the shots. And I just feel like that's, I don't know, that's taking away, that's taking away from everybody's experience. Yes. That's just the way we work. Tacky. That's just the way we work as, <laughs> as photographers and, and wedding videographers. Yeah, I, that's, the, that's the topic for the day, so. Uh, please reach out to us if you're new to the game or if you're old to the game and you just want to talk about weddings or if you've got any questions about how to make things work between weddings, wedding photographers and wedding videographers. Or if you um, want to share a horror story. Yeah, horror <laughs> stories are great because we can all commiserate in that. <laughs> well, and we all learn. We all learn. It, there learned, is a, I, this is actually a good point before we get out of here. Yeah. I've learned stuff just from hearing you talk about it mm -hmm. that I could then apply so that I don't make that mistake mm -hmm. myself. Does yeah. that make sense? Yes, if you can't learn at least learn from something, then there's a problem. So in every worst case scenario, there is always a learning opportunity. So horror stories are definitely welcomed because we can we can all learn from that. And I just think moral of the story is we can all learn to communicate a little bit better. So um, that's all we got for today. So thanks for tuning in and please reach out if you have any questions. Bye. Bye.